Hello everybody, welcome to the Labyrinth of Limitations. Um, this is a little labyrinth where we're going to look at something kind of similar to last episode, but different in an important way. Um, we're looking at the connections between scales and chords, but we're looking at family and this algorithmic guitar kind of concept for getting our hand to hear better. So we're going to look at um, autumn leaves. So. this episode is memorize as little as possible. Memorize as little as possible. We're going to memorize five things really and then we're going to practice in a procedure based kind of way to kind of internalize other aspects which is my favorite thing about everything Barry Harris gives us to practice so we can really do this well. So I'm going to look at E flat fully diminished seventh and that is something we want to memorize but you've probably seen it before. This is the diminished that is in G major six, okay? So I'm gonna memorize that and I'm gonna memorize four different scale patterns in relation to that diminished, really. But I'll show you how and what I mean. This is the diminished that expresses D7 and three other dominant seventh chords. If I lower the fifth string, it becomes D7, so it's the three notes of D7 plus the flat nine of D7, making a beautiful expression of D7. Or you could say D7 is an expression of the diminished, which is a more chromatic way of looking at it. Which then I could say, okay, I'm gonna move that note up instead of down, and that's where my six of, on the five is. So here's D7, here's the diminished, and here's the six on the five. So all of this is a package deal, you could say. All of this is one thing, is, how, is a way of looking at it. So one thing with different little colors. And so I'm going to associate all of this with this scale pattern. And then, so this area of D7, all of those notes in this position, that pattern of D7 that starts with D uh, on my middle finger on the uh, fifth string, okay? So I'm associating this with <laughs> so, that was me resolving in a G. So what I did there was I took my six on the five, and what I'm doing is I'm seeing the six on the five in two different ways. One is, and I've said this type of thing before, but we're going to look at it in a particular way today. One is I view this as A minor six, which it is. So this is the fifth of A minor six, the root, the third, the six, but also this is the second scale degree of D7, this is the fifth scale degree, this is the seventh, and this is the third. And if I see that connection, I can start teaching my hand to kind of hear and think so that I can go, oh, maybe this is scale degree three, and I did three half steps, or I could do one half step, or I could do a pivot, or I could do any of the ABCs. So that's what I did there. lines based off my knowledge that that is scale degree three. So anything you know how to do from scale degree three, so to do in this is half step rules because they really make me think about what scale degree it is. That's going to internalize in that procedural, that process based way. Instead of sitting here and thinking I need to memorize this or that, I'm memorizing very little and learning to work with it, which is what it's all about. A lot of times students come to me and they're trying to just memorize everything but they're not practicing working with it and we should flip that script. We should do it this way instead. I really feel strongly about that. It's really helped me a lot to think that way. So, scale degree three. Okay. 
okay? And I'm resolving it in G. So that's one of the four possibilities because this is a diminished with four notes. So now I'm going to take, go back to that diminished. I'm going to take my fourth string, move it down, and I find A flat dominant seventh, move it up, and I find the six on the five for A flat dominant seventh, which is E flat minor six. I need to see this as E flat minor six. I'm not playing the third string on this chord because it wouldn't sound good. I'd have to do it. Whoops. Uh, is that correct? Oh, I was here. I confused myself. So I have to. So that is E flat minor six. I need to see it that way. So I'm seeing this as the root, the fifth, the sixth, and the third. But also, I'm seeing this as in relation to A flat dominant seventh, because it's the six and the five for that, so I need to see this pattern. to G and I could also resolve the the previous one that I did to D flat because these are tritone relationships in other words this is a six on the five for D7 and this is the tritones minor because A flat is the tritone of D7 so I can Half-step rules in a simple line just to see the connections. You can get as complex as you want. I'm just kind of seeing these connections and it's really fun. So now I'm going to continue with this process. And um, there is going to be something extra about this. So uh, uh, if you see where I'm going with this, hold on, because it's just a little bit extra that we can look at with this. There's a lot extra, but we're going to do a little bit additional with this type of concept. So um, back to the diminished. I'm going to move this down to B7, move it up to the 6 on the for B7, and this is F sharp minor 6. This is the 6th, the 3rd, the 5th, and the root, and I see it in the relation to this scale. So that's this. I can also see it. You often get two choices, front and back, that are near this. So, right? So let me think of resolve it. This is the six and the five for B. So and, and so 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 messed up there, but I put a little tritone in there. Um, then we got one more. We have to do, back to the diminished, I'm going to take the second string, move it down, and take the second string and move it up. And now this is, this is F7, and this is the 6 on the 5 for F7, which is C minor 6. So I have to see, again, 3rd, 6th, root, 5th, and I have to see, in relation to F7, this is the 7th, uh, 3rd, root, and 5th. No, that's not right. This is the, uh, in relation to F7, so this is F7. So this is the 7th, uh, the 3rd, the 5th, and the ninth or the 2nd. So that was two half steps. So, so that is resolving to B flat. Okay, so... Stuff. 
can be done. That's just making lines I did. I don't know exactly what I did, but something like that, yes. And um, so that is always, that's the thing that I was really making clear to my student. This will always be connected to that pattern. I can always see that. That is its dominant seventh scale, okay? And we can put this in a variety of contexts and that will remain true. So let's go back to it. And I go. So what I did there was a drop two and four. So I can do this with all my voicings, drop two and four for A minor six, and this is the seventh up here of D7. And I just did that. Whoops, maybe. Off of the seventh of, but I can go back to that idea. Now, if I wanted to do the tritone D seven, I could go or you know all that kind of sound is there. So that means I have access to the tritone if, in my procedural practicing, you don't do it mindlessly. You see these connections, you do ABCs, you do half step rules, really helpful. And then you associate. So I'm associating the tritone relations. What does that mean? That means A minor six is a tritone away from E flat minor six. So I'm associating all of that as, as I associate this. And, and so I go, I do a little tritone at the end, I can go, resolving, both of those are resolving in a G. I can resolve both of those in a D flat. So now, and then, so then I can go, um, so, and then maybe, that's resolving a D flat, just thinking beginning of body as full. So in one case I'm thinking, Autumn leaves, in another case, body and soul. Autumn leaves, and I'll do tritone, and then, right? And then now, body and soul. And then I'll do the tritone. Um, but I go, connections. So I'm seeing that in the same way. What if I um, uh, I need to see that association between this and this too in the same way. But then also, also very powerful in this way of practicing. Again, I've memorized five things. I've memorized this diminished and then I've memorized at least one of these scales. But you know, because you can practice one at a time. But you're memorizing five things because you're memorizing this this type of position. So the, that pattern, and then, or, and you don't have to memorize all those notes, just parts of those patterns at least, at least seven notes, you know, or, or a little more than an octave, so you can do half step rules nicely, or uh, some of the half step rules. But then, what this allows you, so that's what I memorized, but now I can say, okay, and I'm gonna go, Whoops, what was that? So, maybe I should learn my scale of chords. So, so what I'm doing, I didn't do a very good job. I, I'm gonna maybe not work my way down, but see, I can work my way down my scale of chords. This is still D minus, D dominant seven, because this is still, the six on the five. A minor six, the scale of chords, and now this is that same chord I was looking at up here, and it's associated with the same pattern I gave it here. F7, D7, so I can go, and that works. 
I could go up the scale of chords. And this I was looking at down here. And now this is related to the same. So. So that is the same relationship there. And then where would I, and then, and then this guy, so this, now I'm gonna go, this is A minor six. So here's A minor six. And I'm doing the same pattern I did down here in relation to this shape. See, I, I would like to do this here, but I need to, the camera to see. So. <laughs> And then similarly, this is the triad. But now I'm in the minor key, I'm going to resolve to E minor, and this has A minor 6 for the 2 chord resolving to E minor, because that is A minor 6 is also, in addition to being the 6 on the 5, it is F sharp half diminished 7, or F sharp minor 7 flat 5. So that means, and then, and then, so that would be the two chord running into B7, running into E minor. And in a minor key over B7, I'm going to play D dominant seventh, ending on the third of B. Because that's essentially E harmonic minor. So, Thing, that's essentially the same thing as B7 with a with a B sorry D7 with a D sharp and so so that means what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the two chord and then the five and then and then E minor and the two chord I can play that D7 Then if I wanted to get tritone sound, the tritone of B7 is expressed in this chord. This is the tritone of minor for B7. And there are a couple little note differences, just a couple little flavor differences in those two things. That might be a bit much for y'all, but this video went longer than I anticipated. But I think it's a really fun thing to think about. And what we spent the past 18 minutes doing is really looking at five things of memorization that you can memorize bit by bit. You really need to start with the diminished and then we go and we do the scale patterns that are related with each of its dominant sevenths. And, uh, but I find the dominant sevenths and the six on the fives just by moving notes up and down. So I don't need to memorize that stuff in order to practice this. And then you can have a rich practice session looking at some musical stuff without burdening yourself with tons of memorization. And then the very act of practicing and working through that stuff will get it into your fingers, into your mind, and into your ear in a beautiful way that is uh, more fun and actually more effective than just sitting there and trying to memorize thing by thing by thing by thing, which I never did. I've never done that. And so I would recommend you don't do it either, okay? Um, thanks for watching, this has been fun and uh, I will uh, follow up with more. So keep practicing.